decided to join us tonight for this midweek Bible study. Um, we're still just kind of plugging along during these weird circumstances, uh, doing the best we can, just trying to make it day by day. It'll get better. I don't know when, but it'll get better. I trust that. Um, you know, during this um, really weird time with all these problems going on, especially with the pandemic and, and all the other problems we're facing, I know that there are a ton of prayers going up right now. Uh, I know that we are sincerely praying with all our hearts uh, about all these problems, and that's good. Certainly prayer is what we need to be doing right now. Uh, we need as, as many prayers as, as we can possibly get at this particular moment. So keep lifting those prayers up uh, for everybody, for, for everything going on right now. Uh, but inevitably, as we continue to pray for our current circumstances, but also as uh, people continue to get sick, uh, as, as more and more of these tests come back positive and, and numbers continue to grow larger and larger, uh, I know what's going to happen. We're going to start asking, well, why aren't we getting what we're praying for? We, we've been praying for things to get better. We've been praying for the virus to slow. We, we've been praying for people not to get sick. And yet those things have continued to happen. Why? Why aren't our prayers uh, working the way we think they should? Well, I'm reminded of one particular passage I want us to look at briefly tonight. It's 2 Corinthians chapter 12. I encourage you, grab your Bible, read with me. Um, there's, there's no substitute for being together in God's Word. So 2 Corinthians chapter 12, we're going to start in verse 7. And this is a passage I'm sure you know very well. But this is the Apostle Paul speaking. He says... <clears throat> So to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given to me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. 
Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weakness, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So Paul says that uh, with, with all this great knowledge of God that he has, it would be really easy for him to be, uh, to be boastful, to be proud of what he knows and, and this relationship he has with God and this importance that he's taking on. But to keep that from happening, he was given this thorn in the flesh. Now, what is that thorn in the flesh? We don't know. A lot of, um, a lot of theories out there. It seems to me clearly it's something physical since it's a thorn in the flesh, but we don't know. And that's, that's not the point. The, the point isn't what it is. If Paul wanted us to know, he would have told us. But the point of, of Paul telling us about this thorn in the flesh is not to discuss what it is or what it was, but it's to look at what God's response to that thorn in the flesh was and, and ultimately what Paul's response to it was. Three times, Paul asked God to remove that thorn in the flesh from him. And three times, Paul got the same answer. No. Now, I'm not sure about you, but in my mind, if someone like Paul asked for something, he should have gotten it, right? This is the Apostle Paul speaking. I mean, has anyone had more of an importance or an impact on the church other than Christ in history? No. Paul's like, number one, he's at the top of the list. If Paul asked for something, surely he would get it. Especially something as simple as this, asking to be made well of, of some sickness, some limiting factor in his life, surely Paul would get that. But he didn't. Three times he asked, and I'm sure they were sincere, faithful prayers, and three times God said, no. There's a reason for that. It was so that Paul wouldn't boast in his strength, but instead he would boast in his weakness. He would boast um, in the fact that he had to rely on God to get him through. I think there's an important lesson for us here. In moments of weakness, we can truly display the power of God. Okay, maybe we can display it when things are going well. Uh, maybe we can say, well, look how much God has blessed me. God has given me this, and he has done this in my life. Glory to God, and that's great. Certainly do that when times are good. But man, when times are rough, when, when things have gone off the rails, we have the ability to display the power of God. And certainly things have gone off the rails for us here in, in 2020. It, it's been a rough year. And throughout it all, we can show people just who God is through our weakness. So here's what I encourage you to do. 2020 has been hard. Uh, we have been faced with problem after problem after problem. I want you to respond in light of of Jesus Christ. Okay? Show people that even though our backs are against the wall, even though things are hard for us right now, we have God on our side and we can make it through no matter what. We can boast in our weakness. We can respond to every situation in light of what God has done for us. And we can be a huge light in this community. People can look at us and say, man, look at the people of Slicer Street Church of Christ. Look at all the things they've gone through. They've gone through just as much as we have, and yet they have handled it with such grace and love and compassion. And they have never wavered in their hope in Jesus Christ. What an example that would be. We have that opportunity right now. Things are hard. Many of us are sick. We can't get out of the house. We're not able to have worship the way we want to. But God is still with us. And we can boast in our weakness, and we can boast in his strength. I hope you're prepared to do that. Be that example. Show people how Christians uh, make it through this world through such hardships. Can't wait to see you again. Hopefully that's soon. Um, in the meantime, uh, love you. Love you very, very much. And, uh, and hey, we're praying throughout this whole situation, and we're going to make it through. All right, we'll see you next time.